Welcome back everyone! In today's video, I will show you how I made my Slytherin themed medieval dress to wear to the snowy pine forests of Slovenia. I knew I wanted to base my design in 15th century dresses, but I, as the theme is rooted in a fictional universe, I knew I will probably incorporate some more fantastical elements too. And of course, some embroidery as well. What I settled on is a two-piece outfit, an undercurtle with long silver sleeves buttoned with delicate silver buttons up till the elbow, and an overdress from dark green with long billowing sleeves buttoned on the front of the upper arm, embroidered with silver snakes at the neckline and at the end of the sleeves. To utilize my limited free time the most efficiently, I started with the most time-consuming task, the embroidery. First I did a quick sketch of the neckline design, and then I traced it in Illustrator. I did the front and the back panels at the same time to make sure that the design will line up perfectly. To create the scale effect, I overlaid a hedge pattern in silver onto a grey satin stitch layer, and I think that worked out pretty well. Of course it runs out now. Ah, oh, there was so little left. <sighs> okay, to the store! Okay, we're back in business. the embroidery is done and it's actually embroidering right at this moment I'm ready to go ahead with the undercurtle which will be the one with the silver sleeve on it I have the fabric uh, I don't have a lot of it because actually all I need is two little sleeves so I went through my stash to find some other grey fabrics I could uh, pair them with and I actually found this one which is just a simple grey cotton, but I think it will be perfect. Uh, it's not a lot, so I won't be able to make it as full as I will make the overkirtle. So I will have to come up with a different way of cutting the pattern out. This is the way I came up for the overkirtle. You can see that it's like alternating to utilize as much fabric as I can. But I think for this grey undercurtle layer, I will just cut it quite straight um, with just a bit of flair. It seems like subconsciously I've been hoarding all these grey fabrics, which is great because I even found this one, which is like a nice shiny-ish... I think it's a cotton, a cotton blend probably. It's really nice and I think it will go perfectly with this sleeve. And even this, together with this, I think it works fine. It's I'm just so lucky I'm hoarding fabric all the time. <laughs> So I cut out the front and the back piece and I still have quite a lot of fabric left actually. I just have to figure out how to make this into two gores. <laughs> but it's looking good. This took a lot of brain power but I figured it out. <laughs> it's basically two gores. One starts here to here and the other one 
It's on the other side. Some will have to be sewn together, but the other one is on the fold. Before I could assemble the kirtle, I had to figure out the sleeves. First, I made a mock-up using a basic sleeve pattern and then I marked where I wanted the button-up part to be. Then, I cut two from my shiny silver fabric and two lining pieces. I cut the lining a bit shorter, so when I'd sew them together and lined the tops of it up, the silver fabric would be turned inwards, thus ensuring that the lining will never be visible when worn. From the leftover, I cut little strips for the button loops. Just to make sure that all the loops are spaced nice and even, I first sewed them onto a piece of twill tape by hand. Then came the complicated part, the part that sort of broke my brain trying to figure it out. <laughs> so I'm not sure I can explain exactly what I did. But the main thing is that you need to sew the loops facing the wrong way onto one side of the previously marked line while your sleeve is still inside out. Then you cut the rectangle open and turn it inside out. And because I have no idea what I'm doing, I just realized that I should have sewn a triangle here, not a rectangle. So to fix it, I just sew a dart to taper it out. I mean, it's not the most elegant solution, but it works. Then I just had to sew the buttons on, or in this case, these metallic beads that I used to imitate the filigree button. And now that the sleeves are ready, I can finally assemble this grey kirtle. I tried it on and marked the lower neckline, because this one and the outer kirtle use the same pattern and I didn't want this one to poke out from underneath accidentally when worn. Then I turned the neckline back twice and felt it down by hand with tiny invisible stitches. Or at least I tried to. The last step was the dreaded hemming of the skirt. And with that, the underkirtle was done. Now, back to the overkirtle. By this time, all my neckline pieces were embroidered and all I had to do was to cut them out with the help of my kirtle pattern I based on the body sloper pattern I used in my indigo dye dress video. I wasn't perfectly happy with the eyes of the snakes though, they were a bit too cartoony for my taste, so I replaced them with sequins that I cut into an almond shape. Then I sewed the back, the shoulder and the side seams closed. Before I'd close the front seam as well, I had to prepare it for the eyelets by folding the seam allowance back twice and filling it down. Then I marked the placement of the eyelets and went to town with my awl. Then, using a matching embroidery thread, I stitched around my eyelets. I tried it on and found that I could take in a bit more from the back seam for a more flattering fit.
And now it was finally time for the last little bit of puzzle, the embroidered outer sleeve of the green overkirtle. I started by figuring out the sleeve patterns. I used the same pattern as for the grey one, made it wider and a lot longer and slashed it down the middle. At this point I was a bit rushed as our trip to Slovenia was coming up fast and it was the middle of the night and I just realized that I have run out of mock-up fabric. So I did what no one should ever do. I just got it out from my fabric hoping for the best. So I cut out the sleeve but I'm not actually completely satisfied with how full it is. As you can see it's quite anemic. <laughs> so I don't have more of the lining silver fabric left so I think I will have to do a bit of uh, after the fact fixing. So what I will do to fix this, I will cut a line here and just insert a big gore. With that crisis solved, I could finally sit down and figure out the embroidery of the sleeves. I used the same process as before, sketching out a coily little snake and digitizing it. The only difference was that I wanted to try and give him a little more depth by using two types of grays for the body, and thus I also used two types of grays for the scale texture too. I tried on the sleeves and marked where the little snake would look the best and tried to position the embroidery there. And while it was embroidering, I hand my kirtles. And also rolled back hem the neckline with a cat on my lap that didn't make matters much easy. <laughs> By now, both of the sleeves were embroidered. All I had to do is to attach the gores to them to make them fuller, same as I did with the lining. Then I pinned the lining and the green one right sides together and sewed them around the edges, except for the arm's eye, through which I flipped it inside out. Now it was nearing its final shape, but it was still a little puffy, so I pressed it all crisp and flat. Now it was time for the closures. I made the buttons from scraps of green fabric the medieval way which compromises of cutting little circles and running a stitch a bit in from its edge. Then you pull on the thread while you try and tuck all the raw edges inside the middle of it. It might look a little ugly and bumpy right now, but the last and the most important step is to tighten everything up by sewing across the bottom of the little ball and pulling them. If you've done everything right, you should end up with a nice little orb. I marked where I wanted these buttons to go on the sleeve and sew them on. The next step would have been to make the thread loops, but I was again running out of time on this project, and I thought I could do that in the hotel. So 
So instead, I just set the sleeves in and searched all of the interior seams. I don't know if you can hear me because this is my GoPro <laughs> and I never tested its capabilities but it's 7 o'clock in the evening before we're gonna leave and I decided to make a hat. You know one of those pointy witches hat? I'm just gonna put you down here and see what turns out. I used card to make the base of the hat then covered it with this green wool from my grandma's stash. My heart was aching to waste it so but it was such a small piece that there was no other use for it anyway. I used hot glue to assemble everything, which I usually don't condone, but this was done in a hurry. I covered both sides of the brim and then used the green satin ribbon to cover the edge of it for a neater finish. In the hotel, I have run out of the thicker embroidery thread I have brought with myself to make the loops halfway through. So at the end, I defaulted to making the base with the embroidery thread and finishing it with sewing thread that I luckily packed. I made the loops with a longer stamp so the silver sleeves have an easier time peeking out from underneath. And we are finally done. <laughs>